This topic is blood supply to four limb in cattle. As we know, the axillary artery supplies blood to the four limb. The left axillary artery supplies blood to the left four limb, while as the right axillary artery supplies blood to the right four limb. The left axillary artery it arises from the common brachiocephalic trunk or anterior iota at the level of the second intercostal space. The right axillary artery it arises from brachiocephalic artery at the level of the first rib. So after the origin of the axillary artery, both right and left, these artery they passes forwards through the anterior mediastinum towards the thoracic inlet. So just in front of the thoracic inlet, the axillary arteries they divert towards the medial surface of the first rib. And here the left one it runs on the side of the trachea and gains the company of the thoracic duct. While as the right one it runs with trachea and anterior vena cava. Both arteries right and left they are accompanied by vagus nerve, phrenic nerve and recurrent laryngeal nerve. Each axillary artery it leaves the thoracic cavity by turning around the anterior border of the first rib below the scalenus ventralis and above the axillary vein to reach the axilla. So it then bends backwards and downwards among the branches of the brachial plexus. So the axillary artery it passes through a loop that is formed by musculocutaneous nerve and median nerve on the medial surface of the shoulder and on reaching the lower portion of the teres major the axillary artery now it will continue as a brachial artery the brachial artery after crossing the medial condyle of the humerus it will run as a median artery the median artery finally terminates into radial artery and ulnar artery each axillary artery after leaving the thoracic cavity that gives different branches they are known as extra thoracic branches and the chorus is known as extra thoracic chorus or axillary chorus the first artery that arises from the axillary artery after leaving the thoracic cavity is the external thoracic artery it arises at the level of the first anterior border of the first rib and it supplies to the pectoral muscle axillary lymph node brachiocephalicus the second branch which arises from the axillary artery is suprascapular artery this suprascapular artery is a collateral branch of the axillary artery it supplies to subscapularis suprasupinatus brachiocephalicus and the terminal part of deep pectoral muscle now the next artery is the subscapular artery it is again a collateral branch of the axillary artery it is as large as axillary artery and it supplies to the infraspinatus deltoideus subscapularis and teres major it gives following branches thoracodorsal artery posterior circumflex artery of humerus and circumflex artery of scapula the next branch which arises from the brachial arteries anterior circumflex artery of the humerus it arises from the anterior face of the brachial artery and it supplies to biceps brachii and coraco brachialis next branch is deep brachial artery it is again a collateral branch of the brachial artery it supplies to the long and medial head of triceps and tensor fascia antibrachii now the collateral ulnar artery it arises from the posterior surface of the brachial artery and it supplies to triceps enconius flexor carpi ulnaris and superficial digital flexor next is collateral radial artery it supply it is a collateral branch of the brachial artery and it supplies to the extensor muscles of the forearm and ulnaris lateralis now 
the uh, median artery median artery it is the direct continuation of the brachial artery below the medial condyle of the humerus it passes along the posterior medial aspect of the radius and terminates into radial artery and ulnar artery there are different collateral branches which arise from the median artery first one are the muscular branches which arise from the median artery and supplies to the pronator teres muscle flexor carpi radialis flexor carpi ulnaris superficial digital flexor and deep digital flexor next collateral branch which arises from median artery is common interosseous artery it arises at the level of the proximal interosseous space before it enters the proximal interosseous space it gives branches to the flexor muscles and then passes through the space and continues as dorsal or anterior interosseous artery the dorsal or anterior interosseous artery is the direct continuation of common interosseous artery it gives branches to the extensor group of the muscles of the forearm and it runs down the groove between the radius and the ulna at the distal space the anterior interosseous artery it gives a posterior branch and then continues downwards and forearm anterior carpal radii now the posterior branch which arises from the anterior interosseous artery at the distal interosseous space enters through the distal space and then reaches the posterior aspect of the carpals and forearm posterior carpal radii it then descends downwards in the metacarpal region as lateral depolar metacarpal artery this lateral depolar metacarpal artery runs along the lateral border of the suspensory ligament and above the fetlock joint it forms a deep volar arch with the middle depolar metacarpal artery which arises from the radial artery so lateral depolar metacarpal artery then reach to the lateral digits as lateral volar digital artery so here in the diagram you can see this is the axillary artery and this is the suprascapular artery then this is thoracodorsal this is subscapular artery and here is the posterior circumflex artery of humerus this is sir anterior circumflex artery of the humerus this is the deep brachial this is collateral ulnar artery and this is collateral radial artery and from here it will continue as a median artery and here the median artery terminates into this is the smallest one is the radial artery and the larger one this is the ulnar artery now the two terminal branches of the median artery first one is the radial artery it is the smallest among the two terminal branches of the radial artery it runs along the posterior medial aspect of the radius and then reaches the posterior surface of the carpus and then it will continue as medial depolar metacarpal artery and then finally enters into the medial digit as medial volar digital artery the radial artery it gives branches to the anterior carpal and posterior carpal radii the radial artery it gives another branch which passes between the metacarpus and the suspensory ligaments and enters through the proximal foramen of the metacarpal before it enters it detaches a branch which runs as middle depolar metacarpal artery this middle depolar metacarpal artery forms superficial volar arch with the medial depolar metacarpal artery now coming to the ulnar artery ulnar artery is the largest branch 
among the two terminal branches of the median artery. It runs under the flexor corpi radialis and reaches the posterior aspect of the corpus and then to the metacarpus and then continues as volar common digital artery. The volar common digital artery then divides into volar proper digital artery which enters into the both the digit lateral as well as medial digit. But at the distal foramen, it gives a perforating branch. The ulnar artery, it gives a perforating branch which enters through the distal foramen and joins with the dorsal metacarpal artery. So here in the diagram, you can see this is the axillary artery here. The first branch that had an external thoracic artery. This is the suprascapular. This is subscapular artery, which gives posterior circumflex artery, thoracodorsal artery, and, and circumflex artery of scapula. Here, this is the anterior circumflex artery of humerus. This is debrachial artery, then collateral ulnar artery, and collateral radial artery. This is the median artery, which terminates into the this is the ulnar artery, this is the radial artery, and this is the common interosseous artery, which finally goes into the later digit as vol lateral volar digital artery. The ulnar artery forms volar common digital artery, and radial artery forms medial volar digital artery. Thank you.